Now it is. All right, eyes up, listen up. Tell us who we're supposed to be. Okay. Well, first I'd like to say good evening. You guys today are going to be Cable Alliance, which is an organization that we contacted earlier this week, and we are very happy that you guys sent us an email back, but we'll get into that in a minute. Now. Hey, what's it called? Cable Alliance. K W I L L I A N C E dot org. K W I L L I A N C E. It's also going to be on that one of our slides. Yeah, it's also going to be on one of the slides if you don't get it right now. Okay. Now, how many of you can say that? Science class is your number one favorite subject for always, for life, every single year. No, just this year. Just this year. You don't have to lie for Mr. Wampler, you guys. <laughs> okay, do you guys remember when science used to be really, really fun, and they'd roll in that old 11-inch TV, and we'd always sing Bill Nye, and there'd always be that one annoying kid who always shouted the Bill, Bill, Bill part? Well... Why can't we make this fun? Wait, what? <laughs> the play. You have to turn it up. <laughs> Y'all can dance. Come on. Okay, you can pause it. No, go back. Oh, never mind, it's going to stop. Okay. Now, since we've gotten you into the mood of actually paying attention to us, our topic was blue-green algae, or the blue-green monster. Okay. So, blue-green algae has caused many problems, and how I would like to explain to you guys how it affects biodiversity. Biodiversity affects it because it affects the animals and the plant life. Blue-green algae floats on the top of the water, and, and the sunlight, photosynthesis, doesn't get into the water, and it blocks the sunlight so the plants underneath can't grow, and, fish can't, and when fish try to eat the plant, the plants have blue-green algae, algae on them. That's how it's affecting biodiversity. How it's affecting ecosystem services, well, there's no photosynthesis, the sun can't reach the plants, the plants are dying because they can't grow, and all the underneath nature, the plants, the coral reefs, they're all dying out because the blue-green algae is blocking sunlight. Okay. Go to the next slide. Okay, now, like I said, our <coughs> project's on blue-green algae. Blue-green algae is a type of bacteria that is in lakes pretty much everywhere, and it's spreading much, much faster than it was years ago to the point where even when we try to clean it up, it's still spreading 5% faster than we're able to. Now, you can get this, like I said, almost anywhere. It's in a bunch of different lakes, like... Oh, it's in Lake Erie. It's in Lake uh, Washita. It's in di many different small lakes that are around um, Kentucky and all the different states. Now, ingesting this water or swimming in it can lead to you experiencing some forms of lung cancer, in the worst cases, heart failure, scarring and tissue, and for animals, in most cases, it leads to death and really, really bad stomach problems. Oh, no, she can... Oh, so, um, I had a question. Yeah. I was wondering um, if you can name off any specific... Um, areas in the world, like oceans, that have a big Well, problem. typically oceans don't have as much blue-green algae because it likes to go to smaller, like, lakes that, because you know, the, are usually around people so that it can grow faster and it can all be together because when it's spread out, it doesn't face as much of a problem. Um, we'll talk about in our next slide how yeah. it goes. If we could hold the question in, it be good. Okay, so, next. Now, how many of you have ever seen a lake like this? Well, this is actually a really big problem because, like she said, it's killing all of the plants except for the ones that grow directly out of the bottom. 
and it's really not safe for animals or humans. But most of the time when people hear the word algae and lake, they automatically assume, well, all lakes have algae, so it's not a problem. But there are many different kinds, and blue-green algae face is the biggest threat. Okay, so we have a story. You can read this, but I'm basically just going to summarize it for you. So there's this lady, Shirley Schultz, and she lived on a lake for over 30 years, and she went swimming one day, and there was in the lake a huge problem of blue-green algae. <coughs> and with the problem with blue-green algae, she, she swam, and then she got out of the water, and she sat there for maybe 20, 24 hours, and her legs started getting red. So then she went to a doctor. And when she went to the doctor, the doctor told her it might be a symptom of blue-green algae. Later on, after another 24 hours, all the bacteria that was inside the blue-green algae ate away all the skin on her leg. And most of her friends said to her, well, why did that happen? I don't understand. You've lived on that lake for 30 years. She said, well, I have also lived on the lake for 30 years, but this has never occurred to me. And so she, says, she said that mainly blue-green algae... She believed, thought that it was just another algae, that algae can swim in it, it's something that fish eat. Well, it's not. Blue-green algae is, actually causes harm to you and harm to animals. So we have a video that um, explains a case where it affected an animal. A really nice one. That was cute. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Now, like we said, it ruins ecosystems, and some of these photos are from lakes that have serious blue-green algae, like this one here and this one here. This one is just going to go into the fact that not all of them are bad. Go to the next slide. Okay, wait, can you go over a little bit? You can just drag it. This way, where you can see it more. It'll be fine. Okay. That's, that's okay. Just click on it. Yeah, just click on it. Oh, well. <laughs> now drag it over. I got you. I got you. So you there you go. There you go. Yeah, okay. Now, like we said, it comes in good and bad forms, but in its raw state, it becomes a monster of huge caution, and it, that's when it becomes deadly or harmful. Now, like we said, it causes heart failure in extreme cases, organ failure, rapid 
and headaches, but not just any types of headaches. You know those headaches you get when your t teacher's been talking for like 60 hours and you start to get that migraine? Well, that's what it is. Next. Can you go to the next one? And this is, it's a type of pill. Yeah. And blue green allergy, when it's dried out, it helps scary allergies and headaches. But we'll go into that. Okay. No, stop. Go back. Stop it. Stop it. Now, it kills pets, mostly like animals that like to swim, like dogs, ducks, or anything that can go in the water or ingest it around. And 56% of animals that have been reported to the hospital with blue-green algae live around these lakes. And I think 11% of them end up dying because of organ failure. Next. But there is a solution. Spirulina is a type of blue-green algae that is healthy after it's been filtered, and there are vitamins that get added to it and poisonous factors that get taken out of it to where it becomes a superfood. And in some cases, it can even cure, like, spring allergies to dust and pollen. So it's not all bad. Next. Okay, they had, they had some expert solutions, but all the expert solutions were basically based on you. So you had to do things to get rid of it. There was no scientific, so there were no scientists involved getting rid of it. So here are some of the key points. One was maintaining a na native vegetation along shorelines as buffer areas. So you would have non, you would not have non-native plants there to, because if it rained it would wash out all the um, bacteria and that went into the water causing problem. You would also minimize activities that result in erosion, reduce the amount of fertilizer used on lawns. So when you put out fertilizer, it would go into the sewage, and the sewage would get washed out into the water and create that blue-green blue algae. Also, you'd fix your le uh, leaking septic tanks systems and um, use only uh, phosphorus-free fertilizer when possible. That's the type of fertilizer that doesn't cause blue-green algae. These are some of the solutions that they said uh, here, these were the only expert solutions that they had on fixing blue-green algae. Okay, we picked this problem because it's spreading rapidly, like I had said. But we can't just tell people about it and spread awareness about it, but that's worth a try. So we figured we'd start a petition on change.org so we could help clean lakes with blue-green algae. And I also contacted you guys, Cave Alliance, and asked if you could help us with cleaning the Kentucky area so we didn't have to deal with losing any of our people in this area or animals to the algae. And past that point, I forgot to update this, you guys actually did email me back saying that you'd love to hear more about it and you'd love to talk to us more about it, and we're pretty excited about that still. Next. So when we contacted you guys, we explained to you this, but some of you guys I know weren't paying attention. So we, the idea started up with researching. And so we first decided we're just going to get a crew of volunteers to clean up the lake. But how are we supposed to do that with a net? Well, if we have a net, it would just get stuck in the net and also catch animals and plants. So then we decided, we figured out, once we watched that video, if you saw in the video the blue-green algae stuck, stuck to the skin, did you see that where he had the hand open like this? Well, we decided if we got artificial skin and put it around the borders of the lake, then the blue-green algae would stick to that, and we would collect that, the blue-green algae that was stuck to the artificial skin, and collect it and dry it out to make um, nutrient food and pills. Now, the reason why our solution would be the best, because we've come up with two different ways of our solution, but we figured that this one would be the best because the other one, like in, you know, where they were getting rid of water pollution and they were taking the net, how it was not only scaring fish but collecting them. Well, we picked the artificial skin because of that, but we also wanted to make sure that we didn't just run the artificial skin across the lake because that'd be more time-consuming it would take more money, and it could scare the fish, and we wanted something that would be the most eco-friendly, so we put it around the borders. Next. So in our conclusion, this is a big problem. And it's not only an ecosystem, uh, it's not only fixing allergies, but it's 
also helping the whole entire ecosystem. Fixing blue-green algae fixes the water so people can swim in it, so that people, the beaches will have money, and the lakes will have money to get people going on these lakes. With blue-green algae, you won't be able to go onto these lakes because it's dangerous. It also um, doesn't, uh, it also fixes the problem of fish that are helping uh, have plants grow and also helping plants grow and... Wait, can you go back really quick? Okay. And like we said, another reason why you should, like, not only to clean up the lakes of Kentucky, another reason why you should help with being our organization is because we're fixing the problems and we're making money while doing it. Because even Miss O'Connell buys a type of blue green algae that we make into a superfood called Spirulina. So Next. The end, we hope it's fixing it. Yeah. So, of course, we are Brooke and Sarah. Sarah got a little too excited when we started talking. Hey, you want to be excited anyway. Next. And then this was us at 3 a.m. in the Mexican restaurant eating and thinking about our project. Sarah was playing the guitar, <laughs> as you can see, and I was really enjoying this food. That's my friend Jorge. He gave us all the chili cooking though. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Okay. Any questions? Hannah? Um, how long, do you know how long it would take for um, a lake to be cleaned up? The borders, we would be going back each month cleaning off the artificial and since we contacted you guys, a part of your website is talking about how you have a bunch of volunteers and people who pay so you can clean. And we just figured that it would be easier to go back once a month than just waiting for it all to come back. And so also, come on. many people have not tried this solution by cleaning it up. It's, I've researched that it's been here. It might not seem like it, but it's been on our 3.5 billion years. Okay, Trevor. How are you actually like gonna go like? It's so it's all around the border, right? Of the yeah. lake. Yeah. How are you supposed to clean it up? Because the more and more it comes onto the artificial skin, it sticks to it. So we basically we take the skin, we will put it, pull it out of the water, and we clean it completely while, of course, being safe and wearing gloves and keeping protection so we don't get sick. And once we clean it, we take it to the factories that make the allergy pills and the algae pills and the superfoods. Michael? You said that it was growing faster. Or how, why is it growing faster? Because it, each time it spreads to a different lake, it, it goes on to fish and fish from around the lake. And the more and more fish that are in the lake, the faster it spreads because each time they go to a different part of the lake, that's where the algae goes with it. And it basically, it expands the more water that touches it. So it's like growing everywhere to where it's becoming more uncontrollable as we don't care about it. <laughs> Kayla. Uh, once you like get rid of all, all the algae that's there right now, how are you gonna make sure that it doesn't come back? Well, as in earlier, we could also sell a product as in using the fertilizer. People put fertilizer on their lawn and so we would make sure we would have a negotiation with government and get rid of that fertilizer and put a new fertilizer down that helps the ecosystem. Jackson? You said that you put artificial skin around mm -hmm. the edges of the lake yeah. for solution. What's the estimated price there? Well, artificial skin comes in different prices. Typically when it's used for surgeries for <coughs> children, it's more costly. But the type that we're getting is thinnier. <laughs> thinnier? So it costs over $1.5 million to get it for a whole section of the lake. The lake is a big area. Yeah, depending on the size of the lake is how much it would cost. Uh, Spencer? Um, how, sh how do we know if the algae in the lake is the blue-green algae or not? Well, like it said in the video, if you fear that any lake near your home or around your area has blue-green algae by the way it looks or feels or if people start getting sicker when they live near it, then you can contact your local uh, authority and they will come and test it. Or you can see if it is just by the way it's not like many other allergies by its consistency. Karen? Last three questions. Can you ask a question? Can you 
tell us the cascading effect in the ecosystem because of this? Hmm? I didn't. Can you tell us the cascading effect in the ecosystem because of this? Well, basically what's happening to the ecosystem is the fact that the more blue-green algae, the more it rises to the top and it surrounds the lake because with this algae, it doesn't fall to the bottom of the lake. So the plants that grow from the bottom of the lake and the fish that live there aren't getting the sunlight for it. And when plants don't get sunlight, they die. And when fish can't eat the plants because the plants are dead, the fish die. And when smaller fish die that eat the plants, bigger fish die. And it's basically killing the whole ecosystem of the lake or the pond that it's in because it ends up being the only thing that's left there. What about the fish that eat the plants? I already said that they die because they can't eat the plants. Also, what other fish that eat the plants? Many different fish that live. In Any the type of fish that live in lake eat plants that live on the bottom, and then bigger fish eat those fish, and they can't eat those fish if those fish are dead because the plants are dead. How do you know that the algae is just going to grow back like as fast as you're taking the algae out that it's not growing anymore? Because once you completely take it away from a concluded area, it can't come back until somebody brings it back. And if somebody brings it back, then like we said, the artificial skin, it just stays there. And we clean it as often as the volunteers can come out. And we but if it's growing while you're just taking little bits out, then we're probably. not taking little bits out. Are you taking all of it at the same time? We're basically, we leave the artificial skin around the borders for a, a month. And once it's all around the borders, we completely clean out all of the artificial skin to where there's no more on the artificial skin. And then once it's all out, we leave the artificial skin there so we can still come back and check on it to make sure it's not becoming a problem again. Last question, Michael. Where are you getting money at to buy the skin? We're well, asking you guys. And we're asking that. And like we said, it's an organization. So first, because y'all's, or your all's, whole thing with your website is that you're, you are already going around cleaning up harmful algae in lakes around Kentucky. All we're asking is, while you guys are getting funds, we're helping you so we can pay for the artificial skin. And once we get it going, and we're selling the food, and we're selling the algae pills, it can automatically triple itself in growth, and we can get more skin to clean up more lakes. Thank you for listening to us, and I hope you make the decision to help us. Okay, I'll tell you. Um, everyone else? Uh, yeah. All right, guys. Uh, I didn't see you when I was when they were talking. I went ahead and looked it up. I don't have any any stuff from this class from your evaluation. So, so you guys know, go to the classroom. It should be under sign Yeah, I turned two. I turned the first one. I turned two. Refresh and see, but make sure you get your evaluation in for Cook and Sarah. We will go from there. I'll dismiss you guys in uh, about a minute. So, so we're presenting tomorrow? Yes, first thing. So we we'll start with Judy and Kayla tomorrow. In our class, we got two questions. Hey, did you go to dance